Hello there, welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Now, our video today that doesn't have a lot to do with radio controlled models, but it's really interesting. If you're a techie like myself, you'll hopefully you'll find this to be a really interesting video because a good friend of mine, or an old friend I hadn't seen for years, dropped by on the weekend and bought this with him. Here we go, what's this? Well, I'll show you. This is what I'm going to show you in the video. It's memory, computer memory. And I guess it is related to models in a way because these days most of us use these. <laughs> the little micro SD cards or the SD cards, Transflash cards, use them for storing video and all sorts of stuff. And they're amazing little bits of gear. You know, how much stuff can you fit in these? Well, you can get 32 gigabytes, I think even 64 gigabytes on an SD card. And it fit, it's not much bigger than a fingernail. Amazing, brilliant bits of technology. But let's wind the clock back 40 odd years and see what computer memory used to look like. So here it is, the magnetic core memory. And it's a bit hard to see it, even if you're on HD at this stage, because there are these little things are so very, very small. But basically, let's have a look at the, at the, the panel on this so you can see what it says, give you a bit of an idea of date and stuff. I better zoom into that. So it's a Lytton Memory Products device. And it is, if we look here, it's 8 by 7, 8, 8 K bits by 17. So it's about 16 K bytes in modern, uh, in modern terms. And why has it got 17 bits? Well, I suspect one of those bits is for parity. It's an old thing. You used to use one spare bit and a word of memory just to check to make sure all the other bits were okay. So if something happened and a bit accidentally flipped or something, you could tell that it was a faulty memory location when you read from it. So parity, yeah, don't see parity memory much. Well, you don't see it in very many products these days, but it was quite common when the reliability of memory was not that good. And I think this is the manufacturing date code, eighth month of 1973. So yeah, it's 40 years old, a 40 year old piece of memory. I just confirmed that. We'll have a look at the, the chips on the other side of this board because they'll have a date code as well and see if we can read what that is. Um, here we go. Yes, the date code on those is, oops, upside down. I'm having a look through the viewfinder here to try and read these things. The date code is 72. So it's the, um, can't read it probably without my glasses, but 1972, the chips were made. So this is a 1973 board and uh, it's a brilliant bit of kit, really. So let's have a closer look at all these cool bits inside. And again, even at this uh, macro shot, you can't really see each one of the little cores in here is one single bit of memory. I'm going to have to get my macro lens out and have a really much closer look. So here we are with a real close macro setting. I mean, that's probably as much as I can magnify this. You can see the individual little wires going into sort of like this matrix of little tiny, tiny ferrite toroids, just like the toroids I mentioned in an earlier video that we use for suppressing radio frequency noise. These are little tiny donuts of ferrite, which become magnetized when you write to the memory. And then when you read back, uh, they are demagnetized. And in the process, it tells you whether the bit is a one or a zero. And I'm just going to try and give you a frame of reference here so you can see how small we're talking. I've got a ruler here, maybe I can slide this in. You can see the scale. I'll do it in millimeters because we're a metric place here. Let's see if I can get this into shot. There you go, there's, there's the ruler. Hopefully I can get a decent angle on it. Each one of those divisions is a millimeter. So you can see how incredibly small these little cores are. Absolutely tiny, but despite that, this whole huge massive board only has 16 K bytes. Unbelievable. I've done some more fiddling with lenses and things and hopefully this is is even closer. Now if you've got HD you'll be able to see this a bit more easily, but you can now start to see the tiny little ferrite donuts, the little ferrite toroids that basically are magnetized or demagnetized to represent a zero or a one. And you can see the fine network of wires that run through. There's actually several wires run through each coil. There's a, a sense wire which determine, which basically reads back the magnetic state. And then there's a, a energizing wire which basically flips the bit to a zero or a one. It's a, on Wikipedia, I'll put a link to Wikipedia article in the description of this video. You can see how these things work. But I thought you might want to see really right up close exactly what this stuff looked like when, uh, you know, the real thing. And here's a little close up of the micro SD card against that core memory. You can see if we were using this technology in a micro SD card, we'd probably get, you know, a few hundred bytes maximum, maybe a K byte or so into the size of a micro SD. So the, the density, the storage density of this new flash memory is just so much higher. I'll, I'll do the calculations later because my brain's faded, but uh, it's incredible, a million, a million times at least higher density, absolutely astonishingly, astonishingly amazing. And also at the speed, 
This old core memory was lucky if it worked at one megahertz. Now that's, you know, your typical, even your typical laptop's running at nearly two gigahertz, and that's two, what's that, 2,000 times faster. So, yeah, <laughs> things have come a long way in the world of memory. And, and while I think about it, it's now the 3rd of January. Look at what my phone did, oops, sorry, when um, I turned it on, here we go, look at the date on my phone, look at the date there. That's what happened when it rolled over. This is an LG phone, it is the worst phone I've ever had. It's now the 23rd of the 73rd, 2013, believe it or not, and you can't change it because it says it's an invalid date. So I'm stuck with that date now. Same happened last year, it came right about September. But at least for the next nine months, the date on my cell phone, my mobile phone, is going to be completely wrong. So if you get a text from me, and it appears to come from some strange date, it's not my fault. So there you go, a little trip down memory lane in high tech, and as I say, just the comparison, uh, 32 gigabytes, 16 k bytes. <laughs> Oh, I love the way technology improves stuff. Keeps improving stuff, except my phone. <laughs> so there you go. Um, if you've got any questions, put them on the bottom of the video. If you've got any comments, do the same. I'm sorry to sidetrack from the, the, RC, the strictly RC side of things, but this was just too good to miss this piece of old technology, and I hope people have found it interesting. Now I've got to get back to the bench, and uh, I'm working on the diversity board. So stay tuned. Video's coming soon.